In this video, we're going to discuss what is enterprise architecture, and we're also gonna talk a lot about what does an enterprise architect do. Now, I've been an enterprise architect for over 25 years. I think it's one of the best careers in the entire world. And many people are just so confused about what is an enterprise architect? What do we do as enterprise architects? What is enterprise architecture? And in this video, I'm going to make it clear what is enterprise architecture. Now you may hear the enterprise architect called one of several names. You may hear us called enterprise architects. You may hear us called be called chief architect. And sometimes you'll hear us called chief technology officer, but for the most part, it's the same role. And enterprise architecture, to really explain it, is about aligning the organization's major assets. And an organization typically has three elements of business. And that includes the organizations of people, or the employees, the organization's processes, or how they do things, and the organization's technology and systems to support their people. So enterprise architecture is really about aligning the organization's people, their processes, and technology and truly optimizing them to get our organizations or goal organizations to their desired goal, whatever that goal may be. It could be a hospital that wants uh, more healthy patients leaving the hospital. It could be a bank that's trying to increase net income, whatever it is, enterprise architecture is about getting that organization to its end goal. Now, if we look at most businesses, if we look at probably what's the most critical element of the business, it's actually the people. And whether we have any team, whether it's a winning sports team or a winning company, without the people, there's no winning. Now, when it comes to enterprise architecture, it's about aligning the people, putting the people in the right places and giving them the right processes. So imagine we had a football player, like a quarterback, and then we put them in an offensive lineman position. That quarterback may not be the best fit for the offensive lineman role. Well, it's the same thing for a business. You might have a business strategist and you put them in an operations role. That strategist is going to do a bad job. But you take them and put them in a strategic role, they might do well. Uh, and that's the key here. It's about alignment of the people and putting them in the right places. Just like on a team, you put the people in the right places. So a lot of that when we deal with enterprise architecture is the people and making sure that they have a but they're in the right place. They're supported by the right tools to do their job and do their job better. And they do their job ideally in the best way possible, which now is going to get us into processes. Imagine a business, for example, that had say 200,000 employees and everybody did whatever they felt like. Now imagine 200,000 cats and they're all going in any little direction they want. It would be about the same level of efficiency. So, we as enterprise architects have to help the organization find the optimal processes or way for the people to actually do their job in the most efficient way that's going to support the best quality and best outcomes. And enterprise, every enterprise's needs are different. Imagine a McDonald's, you walk into a McDonald's and honestly, McDonald's has some very specific business processes, very specific. Now, if we look at McDonald's, if you walk into New York, in New York City, Atlanta, Georgia, Miami, Florida, Dallas, Texas, uh, Seattle, Washington, it doesn't matter. If you get a Big Front Mac, it's going to be the same Big Mac for the most part in any one of the McDonald's, anywhere you go, pretty much anywhere in the world. And why is that? They've got a rigid process and a series of technology that supports that rigid process to make sure that the people follow that process and pretty much every single time that hamburger or whatever it is you're getting at that McDonald's comes out the same time. Hamburger, chicken, what have you, I don't know. Now, imagine a business that does highly customized items. They could not work within the rigid processes that a McDonald's might use because that would hurt that business who needs to do things in a custom matter. So as enterprise architects, our job is to help find the organization and teach that organization or work with that organization to find the best way for the people to do their jobs. And we'll be collaborating with the organization stakeholders to do so. Now let's think about the organization's technology piece. We have to understand uh, what technologies can get that client to its goal. And we have to pick the right technologies, not because they're cool, not because they're the best, but the right technologies that will help that organization to get to their goal. 
And every business has different goals. And therefore, in many cases, many businesses will ultimately need different technologies. And that's our focus, aligning them. So what does it really mean? What are we doing as an enterprise architect? Well, the first thing we need to do as an enterprise architect, and this is pretty much the enterprise architecture process as well, is we need to start with the company's executives. We really have to. Because we need to find out from the company's executives what's the vision for their company. What's the goal of this architecture project? Why did they bring us in as consultants? So let's walk through an example while we go through the process. Let's say in this particular example, we have the organization and their sales reps are not as efficient as they would like to be. But they know their sales reps are great. The sales reps all had huge sales numbers in their previous companies. They've got a track record of success, but for some reason that organization is just not selling its products as well as it could be. So in this case, the, we've spoken to the executives and the executives said our goal is to increase our revenue produced by our sales, sales team and that within three years, we want to uh, triple our revenue. And we say, okay, triple the revenue is the goal. We've got good salespeople, but they're not able to sell. So go, let's go evaluate that sales process. And maybe we find that in the sales process, that here's the way it works, that the first thing that happens is we've got a set of people, they're called SDRs or inside sales reps. Maybe they write emails all day and they try to book appointments for the sales reps. Now, maybe a different sales rep shows up, usually speaking with a sales engineer on the client. And then let's say it takes 10 plus uh, times for the sales rep and the sales engineer to visit the client before a proposal will be generated. And then we have to figure out how that client will respond to the proposal, how they respond to the proposals and is it in an efficient manner. And then what's the last phases of the sales process and who negotiates and how do they negotiate the sales process? Is there a proof of concept or is there not? So when we now know as an enterprise architect that the goal is to uh, triple the revenue in a short period of time, the goal is to increase the, increase the efficiency, productivity, and output of the sales reps and now we know what the sales process is. Now we can start evaluating the technology. So here's what we need to do. We will now work with our technology team. We will try to figure out various technologies that could potentially help this organization. We will speak to various stakeholders to get this information. And then we will build our architecture team and evaluate what's possible. For example, maybe AI can uh, book the appointments instead of a SDR. And by doing so, maybe AI can book 10 times the number of appointments for the sales reps. Now, perhaps AI can do some research prior to that uh, person, the sales rep, and the, say the sales engineer vetting the client. And that can give that sales rep information on the organization, the organization's challenge, its current financials, uh, any problems that that organization has. And maybe that will give the sales reps some information they need to be a more effective salesperson. Now, maybe with this type of information, uh, for example, that uh, the sales cycle can go from 10 plus visits to potentially six or seven by the sales rep being better. Now, that could increase the sales rep productivity just 30% over there, which could be great. Now, maybe if this business has a proof of concept phase, and maybe it's uh, a cumbersome process. There's a lot of errors along the way because there's a lot of intervention. Maybe AI can write a custom infrastructure as code script. So by the time uh, there's a proof of concept to be done, when the engineers come in, they just launch that script and it works perfectly. Again, uh, showing the customer the organization's good at what they do and they can deliver. And even the proof of concepts go smoothly. So maybe there are various technologies that we can do. So we're gonna work with our architecture team to create an architecture like that, a strategy like that. And then we're gonna go back and bring it back to the organization's key stakeholders. And then they're gonna look at it and say, yes, I like this. No, I don't like this. Yes, I do like this. So now as enterprise architects, we're gonna go back to our team and we're gonna tune the architecture based upon what the customer told us. Now, at this point, as enterprise architects, we have to think about the big picture. Does the organization have the expertise to implement a technology like this? If not, who do they need to hire or who do they need to outsource to? 
how many people and what kind of people will be necessary to implement the new architecture? How long will it take to build out this new architecture? Can this entire architecture be done in one phase? Or do we need to do it in steps? Maybe that organization needs to collect data, a certain amount of data, clean its data, and uh, perform uh, before they can actually move on to an AI architecture that they might want to use. So maybe we need a couple of stepwise transitory architectures along the way. Now, let's say we've designed our architecture. Now we need to create a strategy to manage change because business will change. The market environment will change and therefore the business will have to tune the way its people, processes and technology actually work. So maybe it's a simple change that can be made to the system. And if so, we need a change management system, which we will help create to determine when a change is going to be made and who can make the change and how is the impact of the change assessed by the stakeholders of the organization. Those type of things will need to go through a change management process, which we may help create. Or there may be times where a new architecture needs to be created to change parts of the business. But that's enterprise architecture. It's alignment of the organization's people, its processes and technology. And the enterprise architect is the person that drives that team to improve that organization's people, processes, and technology. Now, I have to say, I love the enterprise architect career. It's been some of the most fun times of my entire life. And if you would like to learn how to become an enterprise architect, which I highly recommend, please join us on one of our free enterprise architect webinars. There's a link in the description of this video to sign up. Now, if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell to be notified of new videos to assist you in your enterprise architecture career or any other architect career for that matter, like a cloud architect or a security architect or an AI architect. This is Mike Gibbs signing off for now and I look forward to seeing you in a future video. Take care.